for Molyneux. Is that pronounced right? That's good. Because between Steven, Stephen, and the A E U X, I, I, could, I could spend the rest of my life policing how people pronounce my name. But I mean, if it's not like, hey, you're a Nazi, I'm good with that. You know, that's fine. What's your ethnicity? I'm just curious. The Molyneux. So, what is that? I am half Irish okay. and half German. Okay. But the Molyneux comes from ancient Normandy, from like medieval. Okay. France, and we came across to the British uh, with the French invasion of England in 1066 and the Battle of Hastings and so on. Then we settled in Ireland. So okay, it's a long lineage. So what's your message? What do you what do you think your overarching message is? I know you do a lot of videos. I really like them. I find them very intelligent, very honest. I don't know why. I'm sure people have mostly love, a little bit of. But what's your message to people that don't understand, or your main message to the world? Ah, uh, you see, now here's the problem. If I can distill it down, there's no point having 4,000 shows. No, I'm kidding. That's a, good, that's a good challenge. So, I want to bring philosophy in a very workable way into the minds and lives of people. Because philosophy is like this abstract thing. You say, oh, it's all so philosophical means it's kind of out there and you can't really harness it and it doesn't do you any good and it just wastes your time and makes you feel uneasy. And uh, So, I really want philosophy to be a very practical discipline that people can use in their daily lives, like reason and evidence and critical thinking and skepticism and all of that stuff. Our brains are fantastic at it. As a father, I know that my daughter is like incredibly rational and logical and skeptical. We're born with all of that. It's really what makes us different from the animals is our ability to conceptually reason. All human beings of sound mind have that capacity and it's kind of eroded and stripped from us and we turn into like the NPC meme, like the frightened kind of programmed conflict avoidant uh, approval seeking bots which are not quite flourishing as human beings so uh, reason and evidence teach people how to think how to validate their their perceptions and how to be critical and skeptical of, of the things that they're told so that they know that they're standing on firm ground when it comes to having knowledge so I've been doing it for about 12 years we've got uh, got almost 900,000 subscribers on YouTube 600 million views and downloads over 100,000 books for free available at free to make over 100,000 books sorry I was like Whoa. I know, I'm doing the monthly thing and I <laughs> oh, switched no, no. gears there. I, I, I yes, I've been typing. I was like, wow. Uh, no, sorry. I have, uh, I don't know, like uh, maybe a eight or nine books available for free at Free Domain Ready. 100,000 a month uh, book views and downloads. So, oh, okay. gotcha. Yeah, so I've really been working hard to make philosophy accessible. i got a new book coming out shortly called Essential Philosophy. It's going to be free to everyone because I just want people to know how powerful and great philosophy is to reclaim it from the academics and put it back into the hands of the people where it damn well belongs. What are your thoughts uh, and you know, predictions on artificial intelligence. Because that's, that's a big thing I think that's growing. It's implemented in Facebook, Google, they're using it to demonetize. And the future of it, you know, Elon mentioned on it, but he yeah, has yeah. a very, you know, logical person. How do you feel about well, it? Well, I'm gonna claim a tiny bit of expertise here because I am in fact a Russian bot. Not many people know that. <laughs> I changed the entire election in 20, no, I, I was a computer programmer. Okay. For many, many years. Before I was uh, into philosophy online, I was an entrepreneur. I was chief technical officer, head of R&D. I coded systems that sold for well north of a million dollars sometimes. So I know a lot about computer coding. Now, I haven't done it for a while, but it's not like everything's really changed. So AI is a scapegoat for a lot of companies. So what they do is they program things, right? And then they say, hey, man. It's just the it's, algorithm, it's, right? it's the AI. You're like, yeah. like they have no relationship to the algorithm, That's right? So I said the same thing because they're like, oh, we had, but they coded it that way. Yeah. They, they put in the code words. They yeah. put in the their political agenda yeah. into the coding. Yeah. So if you have in your code a suppression mechanism for anyone who mentions the Constitution or the First Amendment or the Second Amendment or the Fourth Amendment. You're coding that, and then if, if it's a conservative say, hey man, we're being suppressed, it's like, oh, we'll have a look at the algorithm and we'll see if this mysterious alchemy can be somehow changed so that it's more fair. It's like, dude, the computer is passive. What about the it does? It does exactly what you tell it to. It's like a car. Absolutely. Like a car, if you drive into a garden gnome, you don't say, hey man, the car algorithm mysteriously put me. It's like, oh, absolutely. So I, I think it's... What about the trajectory of it, like 10 years, 20 years? I mean, nothing is going to be predictable, but do you, like, where do you think that's going to go? And what well, people want censorship. 
I mean, people who can't think don't want counter opinions because they don't know how to think, right? Like, it, 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 I don't want to bring a knife to a gunfight either, right? If you can't think very well and other people are really good at thinking, you want to suppress their viewpoints. So I don't want people to focus on artificial intelligence or the mystery algorithms. The computer is doing exactly what you tell it to. Nothing more, nothing less. You say, oh, well, computers learn. No, they don't. So we got to control ourselves. Yeah, so don't, don't, don't let people tell you it's the algorithm. Don't let people tell you it's artificial intelligence. It's all programmed and they know exactly what's coming out of it because they know exactly what they put into it. And the computer has no consciousness. It doesn't learn. It doesn't reason. It doesn't think. It doesn't go to sleep and have big dreams and wake up inspired. It doesn't change its mind. It doesn't. It just does exactly what you tell it to. You know, like, I mean, if you hit frappe, you get frappe. It's not like the computer's like, whoa, I guess it decided to make me a frappe. You know, like it doesn't. So forget the artificial intelligence. Focus on the people who are programming it and don't let them distract you with uh, this dazzling nonsense of artificial intelligence. Last question. What do you think is the biggest problem in the world right now? And what do you think is the solution for it? The biggest problem in the world yes. is the abuse of children, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Uh, almost all dysfunctions and problems in the world arise out of the maltreatment of children. And the maltreatment of children is obvious in some areas and heinous like child trafficking and, and child murder and, and child sexual abuse and so on. But it's a lot more subtle as well. When adults use size, volume and strength to overpower the will of a child, you destroy a very key part of that child's identity. You teach the child that might makes right, that you must find whoever's the most powerful in a certain social situation and then conform to that person's wish and basically shaft everyone else. I'm talking about yelling at kids, I'm talking about punishing kids without reason. I don't even, I mean, I'm a parent myself, never punished, never raised my voice, no spanking, no hitting, you reason with children. Because you have so much power that you should never need to use it in an aggressive manner. You know, like those kung fu guys, you know, they're they take it out on their kids mostly. Well, like, like they have their own problems and then they take it out on their kids, yeah. whether it be verbal or physical. <laughs> How do we solve that on a, on a big scale? Of course it starts with you. Well, you are, uh, yeah. So, uh, spanking is a violation of the non-aggression principle. The non-aggression principle says it's absolutely immoral to initiate the use of force against other people. Spanking is not self-defense. Spanking is not a moral argument. All it does is teach children that you're bigger and you can hurt them. And they then grow up with this fear of authority which makes them compliant to much more sinister secular authorities like the state. So commit to reason with your children. If you see a child being mistreated, being yelled at, being called names, intervene, say something within your family, within your extended family, among your friends, on the street, I've done that too. Don't necessarily have to damn the parents. Maybe they're just doing the best they can with the knowledge they had and you can teach them better. The most important thing we can do is treat children better. If we treat children as equals, they grow up in a society where they value equality and they're not submitting to tyranny, which is the most dangerous thing that happens in society. Stephen Molyneux, thank you so much. I appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. I'll stay tuned. Great pleasure.